Well, it is a, a uh, movement that has developed uh, over the last almost 10 years, nine years. I dated from the uh, Great Recession that began in 2008 and had a dramatic impact uh, on the middle class in the West and in the United States uh, really had no leadership, no manifestation because the two main parties, the Democratic and Republican parties, did not uh, represent them. The first signs of it came in the Republican Party in the Tea Party revolt. But other than the Tea Party, it didn't really manifest itself until this election. But the phenomenon was like a wake-up call. The consequences of a populist uh, president in the Oval Office gave a turbo boost to the leaders of the populist movements all around the world, uh, but in particular in, in Western Europe. And what you see is the backlash really becomes a backlash against globalization. The rise of populism and the anti-globalization movement that comes with it uh, has been accompanied by a collapse of order in the Middle East that started with the, the revolutions in the Arab world and turned into civil wars. But the Israeli-Palestinian one was more controlled. President Obama, Hillary Clinton, John Kerry tried to move the parties forward. Uh, I was involved with John Kerry uh, directly as the envoy in, in that effort. My conclusion was that we were further apart at the end of the negotiations than when we started. 18 years since we last had an Israeli-Palestinian agreement in the process, the distrust has grown so much that even though the idea of a two-state solution is still supported by majorities on both sides, majorities on both sides do not believe that the other side wants it. So just when you think it's over, suddenly here comes Donald Trump, right? who rejects everything else or throws out the rule book, but because he is a deal maker, he wants to make what he calls the ultimate deal, the Israeli-Palestinian deal. And the first indication of seriousness on their part was that the President Trump promised to move the US Embassy to Jerusalem, and the next thing you know, they've announced a delay. Why? But I believe that it's because they will try to take advantage of the common interest against Iran that Israel, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Jordan, and the United Arab Emirates have. They have a common interest, a common sense of threat, and they do not want to upset those, the, what that's, what's called the Arab Quartet. So whether they're able to achieve that, that outside, what we call outside in, bringing Arab states into the process in order to help uh, with the Palestinians is a big question mark. The most important idea about uh, Trump to, for us is that uh, he does not want a multilateral world. This world uh, needs some kind of uh, governance Global problems require global solutions. The multilateral system is still something better than not to have it. And really, maybe uh, President Trump give us the, the last push to really integrate more and to really play a role much more sophisticated. I think that the European Union is going to need uh, some kind of uh, institution uh, that uh, will handle the need of uh, a strategic uh, action for the European Union, a sense of a strategic vision for Europe that will require some kind of uh, unity in matters pertaining to security. Therefore, the relation between the internal and external is something that we have to look at from the top. And I think in that context, we will be able to deepen also our integration.